Hello all. For solving uh, linear programming or integer programming formulations, uh, we use computers extensively. There are different uh, software packages available in the market for doing this. We will learn uh, a number of these, but the easiest one that you have an access maybe is the Microsoft Excel. Microsoft Excel has a built-in uh, solver for solving such uh, linear or integer programming, even nonlinear programming formulations. And it's called Excel Solver. In every Excel uh, that you install to your computers, uh, you have this function, in fact. Although it has a limited uh, capacity or capability because uh, the, if you want to solve larger problems you need to make a payment and buy a license for it but in every Excel you can use a limited version of this solver up to uh, as far as I remember 100 constraints and 100 uh, decision variables but most of you most probably haven't seen this uh, solver uh, inside their own excel excel packages because by default it is not there you need to uh, open that solver package and how do we do this let me show it first open an excel file any excel file it can be empty it can be an already existing okay just open excel and go to the file menu and from here go to options in the options you see on the left hand side there are a number of uh, items go to add-ins okay click on it and inside add-ins from here manage section select excel add-ins and click go and here you see there are a number of features that you can uh, choose for our purpose we are going to choose this solver add-in just click on it and choose it and click ok now we have opened this uh, solver utility or feature within excel but where is it how do, how do we find it go to this data uh, tab in the ribbon and you see over here in the analyze uh, tab you will see this solver okay so now this solver is activated and you can see solver uh, here uh, we are going to learn how to use it if you just click on it a window will pop up and now we are going to learn how to insert our model into this solver and uh, how to solve it using this pack After activating this solver package, now uh, we can uh, use this package to solve an example. For this purpose, I'm going to use such a model. Okay, so in fact, uh, this is the ready mix uh, example from Hamdi Taha's book, in which we are deciding uh, the amount of exterior and interior paints to be produced using raw material M1, M2 and a number of demand constraints. So the model is this and for sake of easiness I'm going to copy this model inside Excel so that we can see the model here and uh, write the model uh, into this Excel. Okay, so uh, while entering the models in Excel we are going to enter the objective function formula and the constraints as uh, formulas of Excel into the cells and the data also will be entered into these uh, cells and then in order to solve it, solve it we are going to use this window okay so let's first uh, write the data and the model into this sheet so basically you just need an open sheet and in this sheet we are going to input this model first thing in this uh, model we have two dec uh, decision variables x1 and x2 
So each decision variable will be represented by a cell in Excel. Okay, each decision variable will be a cell. You can choose any cells. Okay, so for example, you can say that this A1 will be X1 and B1 will be X2. You can say it. You can select uh, A1 to be X1 and M1 to be X2. Anyway, is possible. You can say, that, okay, this F3 is X1 and G6 is X2. Okay, it's uh, it's you can do this. But the thing is, in order to be understandable, in order to be clear and clean, it's better to organize the Excel sheet. For this purpose, uh, I'm going to select A1 and B1. Uh, to represent decision variables x1 and x2 okay so I'm going to fill these with a color let me say with orange color okay so that we can understand these two cells represent our decision variables now I'm going to write my objective function which is 5x1 plus 4x2 okay now remember x1 is this cell and b1 is this cell but you see in objective function we have some coefficients 5 and 4 okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write objective function coefficients to here 5 and the other one to here which is 4 okay then uh, to this cell over here there's no reason to select this cell you can write it here here anywhere again okay but I'm going to write it here again to organize it in a better way. I'm going to write this function 5 times x1 plus 4 times x2 as a function in Excel. Remember, when you are, we are writing a function in Excel, a formula in Excel, we start with this equal sign. Okay, equals, then 5, I'm selecting this coefficient over here, 5 times okay multiplication five times x1 x1 is this cell plus uh, okay plus four times x2 okay then by hitting this enter or return key we have this formula now this is our objective function and what we can do we can just give for example different values 3 and 2 to these x1 and x2 we can see what happens to this objective function if x1 value is 3 3 times 5 15 and if x2 values is 2 2 times 4 is 8 15 plus 8 is 23 okay or you can keep them empty Okay. Later on, when we solve it, the solver package will enter the optimal values to these cells. Okay, so now these are the objective function coefficients, and this is the formula. So again, in order to understand that the objective function value is written here, I'm going to color it. Uh, I will use this green color. Okay, now the first constraint again you see the for the first constraint we have the coefficients then we have this 6 x1 plus 4 x2 which is a formula and then we have the right hand side for this purpose uh, as I did for the objective function I am going to write the coefficients of x1 and x2 to these two cells okay then I'm going to write the formula of the constraint to here which is uh, 6 which is written uh, which is entered here so we will start with equal sign equals this cell multiplied by x1 variable plus this cell which is the second uh, coefficient of x2 multiplied by the value of x2 and this is 6x1 plus 4x2 okay this is the first uh, formula of the first constraint and we want this to be less than or equal to 24 so I'm going to write the right hand side to here okay it's 24 so this is 
the constraint coefficients these are this is the formula and this is the right hand side but the thing is we haven't said that okay this formula should be less than or equal to the right hand side and we are going to say it in this uh, solver tab so I am going to do it later if at this point I will just write the formulas okay the second one x1 plus 2x2 okay so the coefficient of x1 is 1 and coefficient of x2 is 2 and the formula is this one times x1 okay plus the second coefficient times x2 and this should be less than or equal to the right hand side value I will write it here again as I said if we write some values to here automatically these cells will calculate the values and from here for example what shall we understand if the value of x1 is 3 and value of x2 is 2 then this constraint left hand side of this constraint makes 26 but according to this constraint it should be less than or equal to 24 it means that this solution is not feasible it's infeasible similarly from the second constraint 7 is not less than or equal to 6 so this solution is infeasible but for example if we write 1 and 3 over here 14 is less than or equal to 24, 5 is less than or equal to 6, and this solution for these two constraints seems to be feasible. Okay, so uh, we can you can make such trials over here by hand, but again the thing is Excel will find these values automatically by itself. Okay, let's continue and write the last uh, two constraints. Uh, so minus x1. The coefficient here is minus 1 and this is plus 1 and the formula here is minus x1 times the value of x1 plus 1 times x2 and we want this to be less than or equal to 1 and lastly uh, you see here x2 less than or equal to 2 if you like you can say that okay 0 times x1 plus 1 times x2 or basically you can just say this is 1 over here you don't write anything here and you say that this equals to this x2 times uh, 1 times x2 and this should be less than or equal to the right hand side 2 okay you see now these uh, in this part again I am going to color it with let's say blue we have written the coefficients of the constraints and the formulas of these constraints and the right hand side values but we haven't entered the constraints less than or equal to greater than or equal to or those okay then what shall we do now it's time to open this solver window just click on it and this window opens and in this window basically we identify which cells contain the formula of the objective function whether we minimize or maximize which cells contain the decision variables and which cells contains the constraints okay we are going to input all these in this window it's very easy okay so the first thing is uh, we need to identify the objective function here so just click on this and point on point to the cell where you have written your objective function formula remember the green one was it was okay so d4 so this is d4 is the objective function so what do we try to do minimize or maximize okay basically you can select from these two you can also here there's another option if you want to set the objective function value to a specific one for example 8 
you can say that okay I want a solution in which the objective function value is 8 in that case uh, the solver will try to find such a solution but in our case we are going to select either one of these min or max and in this example it's maximization then in this third line it says by changing variable cells it means that where are your variables and just click on this and select your variables x1 and x2 so basically you select click uh, on one cell and drag to the other one and release the button so you will have these decision variables okay now here it is time for uh, the constraints and we are going to add these constraints basically you can add a constraint change a constraint delete a constraint or load for example an already written model and etc all these are here options since we have no other constraints uh, yet we are going to add them so i just click on add so it says that cell reference which means the left hand side formula where is this formula for the first constraint remember our formula is in this cell which is d6 so just click on it and then it will appear here and click on this button so it's d6 and this constraint is it less than or equal equal greater than or equal okay in linear programming basically we are going to use these three options one of these three options later on in the next semester when you see methods of OR course you can select integer or binary etc okay these are not for linear programming in our case this sign is less than or equal to so i'm selecting that one and the constraint the right hand side of the constraint is over here so i'm just saying it it says d6 should be less than or equal to f6 okay and when i click ok you see that constraint is written here and i can add the second one the second one is again the formula is here d7 it's less than or equal to again and the constraint right hand side is six okay and if you want to add more instead of clicking ok you can just click on add so that this constraint is added and now you are ready to enter the next one again you can select this left hand side less than or equal to this right hand side click on add and then select this left hand side formula again less than or equal to the right hand side formula and now there are no other constraints just click ok and you see d6 less than or equal to f6 d7 less than or equal to f7 all four constraints are entered here okay but there is an easier way to enter such uh, constraints where all the signs are less than or equal to okay instead of adding them one by one i will show you another method so first let me delete these previous ones and what I will do is I will click on add and I will select this cell reference but instead of selecting just one cell here I'm going to select all these four cells for the left hand side formulas of all four constraints okay then all of them are less than or equal to and then for the right hand side again I'm going to select these four right hand side values okay and when i click ok you see this left hand side from d6 to d9 is less than or equal to f6 to f9 so you can do it easily but you can do this only if in all these constraints the sign is less than or equal to if in several of these the sign is less than or equal to and in some others they are greater than or equal to and etc you cannot do them all together you need to do the uh, split them so you can write the constraints for less than or equal to first then greater than or equal to then equal to and etc okay so at this point what do we have 
we have this objective function we identified that cell we identified that this is a maximization problem we identified in which cells the values of x1 and x2 appear and we have written the constraints but be careful in our model uh, x1 and x2 are greater than or equal to zero and if you like you can add by saying that okay this value which is x1 should be greater than or equal to and if you like you can write zero here even you can write the data to here as well but the thing is you don't need to do it because there is an option here uh, for which if you click on this one and if you select it choose it it assumes the decision variables to be non-negative okay so basically we don't write the non-negativity constraints uh, specifically but we just select and it's default in fact uh, if you don't change anything it will assume that the decision variables are positive or non-negative okay now the last thing that we are going to select is uh, there are different methods that this solver can use to solve optimization models this solver can solve integer models nonlinear models and uh, it can use some kind of heuristic algorithms that you will learn later on basically there are three different solution procedures as you see the default one is this nonlinear one but the thing is in our case in this course it will be a linear program so you will select simplex LP okay don't forget to change this at this time everything is settled if we just click on solve it will solve and give us the optimal solution but if you want to make further if you want to select further options you can click here to the options and you can set the parameters related to these solution methods okay so the parameters related to all methods parameters related to the nonlinear solver and parameters related to the evolutionary solution method you can change them from here in our case we will not change anything we will continue with the default uh, options okay so at this point what we will do is we will just click solve and you see a new pop-up window appeared but on the backhand side you see that now in cells a1 and b1 for x1 and x2 you can see the optimal values which are 3 and 1.5 and on this green cell over here you can see the optimal z value which is 21 and also in these constraints over here you can see the left hand side values and you can see the right hand side values okay so uh, the problem is solved now in this pop-up window there are a number of options you can select from here uh, if you want to keep this optimal solution you can just select it and click OK and you will have the uh, sheet the optimal solution in your sheet but if you select the restore original values it will not keep this optimal solution and the original values before solving it will be restored I want to keep this solver solution okay then here if you select this one and click OK you will go to the previous window but if you don't want to go to the previous window if you just uh, unselect it and click OK then this window will disappear and the Excel sheet will be opened okay now from here you can select some reports this Excel may provide some reports to you and if you select these and click on OK you will see that here three new sheets appear one of them is the answer report the second one is the sensitivity report and the third one is the limits report by the way since we selected to keep the original sol uh, keep the optimal solution the values of x1 and x2 
uh, are not restored. They are the optimal values. Uh, so the solution is already here. You know the optimal Z value, you know the optimal X1 and X2 values. But if you want to see this as an answer report, as I said, you can go to this answer report sheet where you can see the details uh, of the solution. Okay, You see that this objective function value, optimal value is 21. Originally it was 0. After optimization it appeared to be 21. The variable cells you see A1 and B1, originally they were 0, 0, but now they are uh, 3, the optimal values are 3 and 1.5 and uh, again we will learn this in the uh, integer programming course and they are not integer but they are continuous decision variable we call them and for the constraints you see from here the left hand side values their formulas and you see if it is binding or non-binding, what does binding mean? Remember, if a constraint is satisfied as equality in the optimal solution, then it's called binding. But if a constraint is not satisfied as equality, it means that there is some slack. Okay, So it is non-binding. You see, for binding constraints, the slack is zero. What is slack? Slack is this. You see the right hand side value is 24 and the left hand side value is 24. The slack is uh, right hand side minus left hand side. 24 minus 24, 0. 6 minus 6, 0. So here, remember, this was the uh, in the example problem, uh, the raw material M1 constraint. The available amount of raw material 1 was 24. And uh, if you produce this much interior and exterior paints the total amount of raw material one that you are going to use is 24 so in the end uh, what's the amount of remaining raw material one it is zero you are using all of it and similarly here you are using all of the raw material m2 but if you look at this third constraint you see that the right hand side one minus minus 1.5 negative 1.5 it's 2.5 so the slack value of the third constraint is 2.5, right hand side minus left hand side. And it means that there are still some available resource here. You are not using it uh, to the end. You are not consuming all of that resource. And this slack shows you the remaining amount of resource. Okay. Similarly, for the last one, if you look at 2 minus 1.5, there is a slack of 0 0.5. Okay? So basically this is the answer report. In this sensitivity report, uh, you are going to learn what are written here later in this course about, for example, the decision variables, their reduced costs, their objective function coefficients, and their allowable increase and decrease values. You haven't learned these at this point. We are going to learn it later on. Okay? And also this limits report. Again, we are going to learn these later on. So we don't need these reports at this time. Therefore, I am deleting this limits report and answer report. And also uh, sensitivity report. And also, if you don't want to see the answers in such a format, you can delete that one. The solution is already here. And if you want to make any change in this model, you can just click on solver again and you see this solver solution uh, or solver model is uh, already here. Okay. If you save this Excel file, okay, save this file and close it and then later if you reopen it and when you click on this solver, you will see the model here. So you can play this uh, with this model. You can say, okay, instead of having all these four constraints, what happens if you have one more additional constraint? What happens if you delete one of the constraints? What happens if you change the right hand side value? Okay, what happens if you change the, one of the objective function coefficients? For, for example, instead of having five and four, 
if this was 6 and 4 what happens to the solution so you can go to solver and again the, since this is a maximization the, uh, the variable cells and the objective function uh, value cell is not changed and the constraints are not changed everything stays the same you just click on solve and you got the new solution and you see when you change the coefficients so I don't want any one of these reports I want to keep the solver solution okay just click on OK and you see the solution is now changed to 4 and 0 instead of 3 and 1.5 it is now 4 and 0 but let's see what happens if it is 3 and 1.5 1 uh, 1.5 remember uh, let me first show you when it uh, the optimal solution was 4 and 0 and the optimal z value was 24 now I'm changing it to 3 and 1.5 and you see it's still 24 and what does this say what does this imply it implies that in this model when the objective function value is uh, coefficients are 6 and 4 there are alternative optima alternative optima there are infinitely many solutions and in fact uh, let me delete this one the previous answer report and let me solve it with these new versions okay and let me open these uh, reports you can see that uh, there are infinitely many solutions in fact in this sensitivity report again you are going to learn it uh, later on okay so uh, this is how we use uh, Excel solver uh, to solve optimization models again let me make it to uh, return back to the original model it was 5 and 4 and let me show you one other thing okay here again I am just solving it with this new data and uh, here if I click on this and click OK you see I have the previous solution but this pop-up window returns back okay so if I unselect it and click OK then that window disappears and I am back in this Excel window okay this is how we use Excel solver uh, to solve uh, linear programming formulations now I want to show you how we can organize this Excel sheet uh, for reading it and understanding it easily okay so when you look at this Excel sheet you just see some uh, data some numbers you and some colors nothing more and if you click on solver you see the model you see the uh, constraints and etc but again it's still difficult to read it so for easiness of reading this uh, we are going to reorganize it how let me first insert another row over here and by the way when you insert such a row you see let's go to solver uh, remember initially these cells were in a1 and b1 but you see what happened to it it's just changed to a2 and b2 automatically when we insert the cell similarly uh, your objective function cell and the constraint cells are adjusted automatically so it means that you can insert rows or columns and the model will not be uh, ruined okay. so what I'm going to do it in order to understand that this uh, cell a2 represents uh, this uh, x1 variable I'm going to write x1 to here and x2 to here so you don't need to write it we have solved it without these but when you write it okay it will be easier to understand that these values represent your decision variables x1 and x2 okay again similarly you can write this as your z value so I'm going to write here z 
so that this value over here is uh, z so I'm going to write it in bold and organized in, in this way okay so this is your z value maybe for cleanness I'm I can write it in white okay and then uh, so for these data for these constraints and objective function usually what is the case if we write x1 value over here we write the coefficient of x1 on the same column so that we understand that we will multiply this 5 by 3 and 4 by 1.5 to calculate this objective function you see we are multiplying a5 by a2 and adding it to uh, b5 times b2 by the way uh, let me show you an easier way instead of writing this a5 times a2 plus b5 times b2 you can use another excel uh, formula which is called sum product okay if you select the sum product what you are going to do it asks you to select one array I'm going to select this 3 and 1.5 and then with comma I'm going to select the second one which is 5 and 4 and if you just click enter or return the sum product what does it do if this is the first array and if this is the second array it multiplies each element of these uh, two arrays uh, with the corresponding one okay so 3 it multiplies 3 with 5 and 1.5 with 4 and it adds it up okay so instead of writing it explicitly you can use this sum product as well it's the same thing okay then for these constraints uh, again this is the first constraint if you like you can write uh, explanations to here so m1 availability constraint and etc so these are not necessary for solving okay it is just for us to read it easily okay so I'm going to write here right hand side RHS means right hand side okay so here in order to understand that this constraint should be less than or equal to I'm just going to write here uh, less than or equal to okay again when I write this less than or equal to it's it doesn't have a meaning for solver solver doesn't look at it here solver looks to the sign in here in this constraint okay so if we write less than or equal to here it is just only for us to understand it for to read it easily again similarly I'm going to write less than or equal to less than or equal to and less than or equal to here and you see now when you look at this model maybe it is more easier to understand okay again we can write here objective function and we can write here constraints okay and maybe we can write it in this way so let me format it in bold and this is also bold okay and for example you see in this one there is a formula this is just a data but this is a formula and for those cells that you have a formula you can use it you may use a different color code for example you can select let's say such a color this indicates a formula okay and this left hand side should be less than or equal to right hand side and again you can write all the constraint explanations to here as I said uh, these are just for our uh, selves to understand it easily otherwise the solver model needs only this data okay the less than or equal to that you have written here has nothing to do with the model even if you write here greater than or equal to the solver will solve it as less than or equal to because it's written here less than or equal to okay 
This one is important. This is just for ourselves. But you see, now this version is much easier to understand. And also, if you like, you can just copy and paste uh, the picture of the model in one corner. So then you can quickly check what's going on with this model. Okay, so this is the end of this example. I hope you understood this solver now. Uh, I'm going to make another example, solve another uh, problem using solver uh, and try to uh, demonstrate uh, the features of this solver with that example.